Hello, this is Michael Hoxson again from HoxsonHealth.com. Uh, Today I'd like to talk to you about a topic where I see a lot because people commonly confuse the difference between exercise and movement. Okay, when people think of exercise, they usually think of running on the treadmill, lifting some weights, and they do what they do with that. But I like to look at exercises more as another form of movement. Okay? Now I'm going to get a little deep with this because when you are in a field like I am, you know, you work with people who want to learn how to exercise, to lose a little weight, to get some muscle, get stronger, whatever it may be. But you have to help the client get out of that that, that mode of thinking of just exercise accomplishes those goals. They do. That's just one part of them. Okay, that's a partial truth. But exercise as a form of movement. What is movement, basically? Um, the human body was meant to move. We have 264, over 200 muscles in the body. So obviously we're meant to move. But movement has a... a what's not often talked about or understood has a deeper connection with our metabolism. Okay, so as I go on, before I go on, let's go back a little bit or way back to as we as we've evolved from unicellular organisms, um, where we have cell membrane, a nucleus, mitochondria, etc. Well, as a cell evolved over the millions of years, basically cells started to move because they wanted to expand their experience. They wanted to move towards food. They wanted to move towards whatever would help them evolve. So that's why we as humans in our anatomy have evolved appendages, arms and legs, so that we can expand our experience. So movement is very closely related to our metabolism. Our metabolism is generally thought of as linked or related to all our organs in our gut, our digestive system, our detoxification system, our sex organs, uh, our urinary, bladder, kidney, all of our organs were metabolizing or the metabolism is meant to uh, build up or has more of an anabolic or an expansive effect on the human organism. Okay, so, but Keep in mind, metabolism isn't just centered in the gut area. Metabolism happens all throughout our body, from our little pinky toe to the top of our head, our bones. All parts of our body have some form of metabolism as a form of a process. Okay? Any solid object basically isn't just a solid object. It has a process or processes within them. That's basic physics where there's forces that are working to keep that that structure together to be a solid object. For example, adhesion, cohesion, um, attraction and repulsion are these, these, these little forces uh, that keep a solid uh, object together. But essentially they're processes. Okay, So metabolism are processes that help us to expand our experience because it is linked to movement. Inside our gut, so to speak, there is movement going on. Movement allows for our circulation. Movement allows for our digestion. Movement allows for our elimination. But for some people who are so constipated, that's not so. But no, seriously, to get back to my point, between movement and exercise, movement has a much deeper function than what people associate with exercise. People associate exercise with, like I said before, losing weight, conditioning, performance, etc. But if you flip over that term and go to movement, movement really goes down to a, a, a deeper aspect of the human nature. Okay, So movement, linked or related to metabolism, allows us to will. It's our willing in life, our ability to, to, to have action so that we can experience our life. And generally that energy is centered right around here. And if you study about chakras, 
our ancient Indian energy systems, our chakras, this is the first, second, and third, our animal centers, our lower selves, the things that help us master our physical so that we can expand ourselves to our more spiritual natures. Well, movement is linked to that. So if you're training clients or if you're going out to exercise, or is your exercise program, is it meant to serve your ego, which is your sense of self or gives you a sense of, of existence, okay? Or is it allowing your soul to expand this experience on the earth plane, on the physical plane? So whenever you see somebody with a gut, which is very common, now, let me go back a little bit because the reason why I'm talking about this is because in, I saw the latest issue of National Geographic, and there was a picture of an ancient, of an old uh, Native American Indian chief, and a picture of his great 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 grandson, and they were wearing the same ceremonial uh, outfit, and uh, the grand, the great 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 grandfather looked awesome as far as being fit, healthy, vibrant. And the great 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 grandson, he also, he, he too also, but you could definitely see a difference in our times, uh, how we've evolved, where the, grand, the, 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 the grandson was more, a little bit on the overweight side. Not to be judgmental, but just to observe and to make a point that there's a difference um, in, in, in what's going on in our cultures and societies today. Um, when you see somebody that has a gut, so to speak, okay, knowing that you know now that our metabolism and our movement are generally uh, obvious in those areas. So when someone has a gut, and, and also metabolism and movement linked to our willing, or our ability to, to, to provide action in our lives, to do in life, so to speak. When someone has a gut, they're really not doing what they want to do. They're not following their dream. They're not following their legacy. They're not expressing their creativity within them. They're actually slaves or prisoners within their own physical bodies. Okay, just something to think about. So to tie everything all together, instead of exercising, why don't you try some movement? Why don't you move as an experience so that you can experience your experiencing or allow your soul to experience your experiencing of what we call life? All right. So, I know some of you might just go out and say, yeah, I'm going to go work out, I'm going to exercise, I'm going to, you know, because I feel great. That's great. But that's most likely serving your ego, which by feeling great, now your ego, and when people tell you, oh, you look great, so now you're associating what outside of you, what people say, you're identifying with that as, I must be great. And as we all know, that's egotism, which can really put somebody or limit somebody in their evolution. And remember, we evolved from unicellular organisms or small little, you know, these little things to who we are now. Evolution never stops. So we can actually keep on evolving our species, so to speak, by understanding these deep things. And this has a lot to do also with our medical profession. If the medical profession acknowledged, acknowledged this one aspect of our human nature that I'm talking about, just think of the possibilities of how we could tap into our full potential as human beings. So anyway, I'm running out of time, or am I? So I'd like to thank you. I just wanted to share that with you so it's a little food for thought, uh, food for your evolution, so to speak. Um, thank you for uh, listening again, or watching. And until the next time, Michael Hoxson from HoxsonHealth.com. Have a great day. Thank you.